Welcome back to Fall Day 18, 19, and 20 of the Stardew Valley Min-Max and 100% Perfection Guide. Today, on Day 18, we will be finishing up collecting bones for Gunther, giving out some gifts, and completing the usual chores and resource gathering. Then, on Day 19, our winter seeds will be fully grown, and we'll see if we get the crocus and snow yam, and then we'll have a good luck skull cavern dive. Finally, on day 20, we will finish the video strong with a super luck skull cavern dive. The next video will be on day 21, and we'll be finishing all of the community center bundles, so if you are looking forward to that, please consider subscribing. That way, you'll be sure to see it when it comes out. Let's go ahead and get started with day 18 now. So I went ahead and completed all of the farm chores that I wanted to do, and then we're gonna head off to the mines. I did grab a bunch of gift items that we can give to the townsfolk as we pass them by, once we head to town, that is. But first, we wanna come to the mines and finish up Gunther's special order boards quest, where we have to gather 100 bone fragments for him. So I'm just going to floor 75 over and over again until I see a skeleton, and I'll just keep slaying the skeletons. I'll skip over it. And then around 11 a.m., I do want to start heading off to town. Unfortunately, we didn't get all of the bone fragments we need, but we will be able to finish that a bit later in the day. And I'd rather head to town now while everybody's out so I can give them gifts, and especially Marnie, since it's her birthday. So we will take a quick stop at the museum right here to drop off the bone fragments. I did have some fossils there that I probably should have dropped off, but must have forgotten about at the moment. And we are going to just go around and give everybody gifts real quick. And you can see Marnie is passing by right there. She's actually heading up to Harvey's clinic. So apparently she does have a doctor's appointment on her birthday, which sounds a little bit unfortunate. but. That's okay, I guess. We can still go in there and give her a gift while she's getting her checkup. And right here, giving Elia a gift. That's always good because we forgot his birthday, so we do have to try extra hard with him. We gave Penny a melon, Mary Lewis a hot pepper, and that should be it. We should be off to the clinic where we're actually met with a cutscene. And this is Maru's forehead cutscene, which is activated whenever you enter the clinic and she happens to be there. You are met with a dialogue option, which all three options will affect friendship with Maru. The first will subtract 50 points of friendship, the second will subtract 20 points of friendship, and the third one is the way to go, and you'll get 50 points of friendship added with Maru. After this cutscene, we will be able to give Marnie her birthday gift, and we do have a pink cake for her. Unfortunately, she doesn't love any items that we can get gold star quality of or iridium star quality of right now, so we just have to give her a pink cake. Of course, eventually, when we unlock the keys using, we can technically get gold star quality cooked items, but that won't be for a little while. And she does also love the rabbit's foot, but again, that is a pretty rare item that it's hard to get quality items of right now at least. So we had a pink cake, so that's what we gave to her, but if you want the cheapest option, she also loves a farmer's lunch, which is cooked with just an omelette and a parsnip. After walking over to Pierre's, we are met with another cutscene, and this is Abigail's two heart cutscene, which can be activated by entering Pierre's when Abigail is there, any day except for Saturdays. During this cutscene, we can't gain or lose friendship points with Abigail, but we do get to play a round of Journey of the Prairie King with her. However, it's just for fun. You get no reward for doing so, so feel free to skip this cutscene if you choose. You do only get to play the first level of Journey of the Prairie King with Abigail, but if you do want to play more, you can go to the Stardrop Saloon where there is the Journey of the Prairie King arcade machine there. Unfortunately, beating it won't actually do anything towards a perfection run or min-max run for us, so there's not really much of a reason to do it. But if you are going for achievements, 
there is an achievement for beating Journey of the Prairie King, which is actually a pretty big challenge in itself, but there's also one called Fector's Challenge, where you have to beat the whole Journey of the Prairie King without taking a single hit. This is actually the only achievement I don't have in Stardew Valley. I always end up getting to the second to last stage, the open graveyard stage where all the imps come flying at you, and I always just end up taking a hit. And what's also a bit frustrating about the challenge is I feel like it's very RNG dependent because I feel like in order to succeed, you do need to get a lot of coins to get all of the upgrades and you also have to get lucky with getting power-ups. Maybe one day I'll try to complete Fector's challenge, but for now, I don't think it's really worth my time. Anyways, we're done with that cutscene now. And the whole reason we came into the shop in the first place is just to give out some gifts, a pumpkin to Abigail, and we'll give a beat to Pierre, and we'll give one to Caroline as well. Again, the beats are just a cheap item that is universally just liked by a lot of NPCs, and we'll especially utilize them for NPCs, for example, Pierre and Caroline, who we don't have a whole lot of loved gifts for. We'll then head back onto the mines to finish up that quest, the Fragments of the Past quest. We just need a few more bones, and it does look like this level has quite a few skeletons, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is enough to get us to 100 bones. And for these quests, you can actually drop off the items for the special order before you actually collect them all if you already have them. So that's what we did with the bones, we already dropped them at Gunther's. And if you did hear the little ding, we did collect all that we need now, so we're done collecting bones, we've completed the quest. So we'll now head back up and take a look to our quest screen. And as you can see right there, the quest is now completed. Real quick, we are going to head down and mine some copper in order to complete a help wanted quest from Clint that we picked up. So we'll go ahead and talk to him. And of course, the money from this is really not useful at all. It's very minimum. But the reason we do complete it is because we're already going to be mining copper anyway because we'll always need more ores but mainly to increase our friendship level up with clint after that we are going to head over to the museum real quick just to drop off those artifacts that we forgot to while we were here and then we'll take the mine cart back to the mine just to give the dwarf an omni geode gift and then we'll take the mine cart back to the bus stop where our horse is waiting for us and then we can head back to town to go to the sewers to give Krobus a gift, but it looks like we are first met with a cutscene. And there are some actually pretty strange requirements for this cutscene to be activated. You only need 50 friendship points with the dwarf, which is not even a full heart. And then you also need to have bought a star drop from Krobus. And then of course you need to enter the sewers. After the cutscene, we will be giving Krobus a gift, and that is a gold star pumpkin. I would like to get friendship up with Krobus as quick as possible so that we can ask him to move in just for fun. And it would be nice if we had an Iridium gift. He does love void eggs and wild horseradish. Of course, we have to wait until we can get forging level 10 to get wild horseradish, and then we'll also have to wait till spring year two before we can start getting those again and the void egg we do need to level up our chicken a bit higher with friendship but eventually we might be able to get some iridium void eggs to give him after that we will head back to the farm and we're pretty much done giving out gifts for the day we are going to sort our stuff and then warp to the desert because it is thursday and every thursday we must buy a magic rock candy from the desert trader I then head over to the Desert Oasis because I may have been thinking of going into the casino, but it looks like I again forgot to check the lumber pile by the house, so I will go ahead and do a bit of sorting, grabbing whatever I need, and then I will make sure to grab that, the club card, so that next time when I actually try to go into the casino, 
there won't be a problem and we can just go in. Since we do have a bit of more time in the day, I'm going to pet all of the animals, process some milks into cheese, and then give Robin a gift. Then we're going to head down to the secret woods, chop everything there, and head back to the farm. We're going to go ahead and get all of our stuff organized, and then head to the mines to finish up the day. We're going to be farming dust sprites as usual, as opposed to the skeletons we were earlier today. And something I did forget to mention actually is, last time we did end up slaying 50 skeletons, which is enough for the monster eradication goal. However, it just unlocks us a vanity item, the skull mask. As you can see now, we are stopping at the mushroom floor for all of those mushrooms, and we're also getting quite lucky with some gold. I will keep mining on these floors since we are in need of gold, and that'll bring us all the way to the end of this day. It is always nice to stock up on some gold so that we can craft a lot of mega bombs for our skull cavern dives. We are now on day 19 of fall, and today is a good humor luck day. We will be spending most of today at Skull Cavern, but it looks like we're first met with a mini cutscene. And all this is, is Marnie is asking for a cave carrot. And we just have to bring it to her when her ranch is open. We will be heading to Skull Cavern very soon, but first let's get our inventory sorted, and we'll also check on our greenhouse because quite a bit of the greenhouse is ready. So as you can see there, our winter seeds have grown and we did get a crocus and a snow yam. So both of those will be used in the winter foraging bundle at the community center. So now all we're waiting on is the Nautilus shell, which as I've mentioned before, we will be able to get from the traveling cart on day 21. Unfortunately here, I don't have very many seeds. I probably should have prepared for when all the starfruit would be ready by having a bunch of more starfruit seeds to plant. But unfortunately, Sandy's doesn't open until 9 and we do want to have a Skull Cavern dive today. So I won't be harvesting all these starfruit. I'm just going to plant what I can. And then we do have some coffee beans. And it's always nice to have some more coffee to brew some more coffee because they are pretty profitable and it's also nice to have on hand so I will just plant a bunch of those just in case we decide to plant coffee beans in spring of year two anyway we'll want to have plenty on stock after all of that is taken care of we can warp to the desert and it is Friday so we can trade our emeralds for cheese and then we'll make our way to the Skull Cavern. And since this floor is not very desirable, I can just keep going out of Skull Cavern, leaving, and then going back in until I get a floor I like. And this floor doesn't look too appealing, but I did like that gold right there. That was right by the entrance, so I mined it. And we just got lucky and got the staircase. We make it to a treasure floor where I get a seed maker, not the craziest reward but not too bad and we do make it down to a floor with a lot of gold so it is always nice to get more gold i find it hard to keep stocked up on gold since we are crafting most of it into bombs and then we find ourselves at another treasure floor where i do get a slime egg those slime eggs do sell for quite a bit so i'm going to keep that on hand and we will have to do quite a bit of inventory management any single items that I have that I can eat. I think it's always a good idea to eat those, like the purple mushroom there. And after that room, we're down to floor 36 now. And if I do see dinosaurs like that, I do think it's a good idea to start slaying them, since we will need to eventually complete that monster eradication goal. So I'll go ahead and slay that. Again, continue that inventory management, only keep what we need, and then continue onward. We are all the way down at floor 95 now. And here's an example of a floor where sometimes you just get really unlucky. So there is quite a bit of iridium and quite a bit of mummies, which are in by no means bad, but just look at how long it takes for us to get a staircase. We already blew up about two bombs worth of rocks right there. And now we've laid down our third bomb and we still have no ladder down 
So we do end up getting a hole, which is nice, and make it down to floor 100 now. But that floor did take quite a while, and sometimes you do just end up getting unlucky. It is getting pretty late. It's already 1 a.m. We are down to floor 102, which is not too bad. I didn't really use a whole lot of crafted staircases today. Probably none, because I didn't bring any with, and I don't think I crafted any with stone. The only floors I would have skipped by crafting staircases with stone would be floors such as monster floors or the dinosaur floors and probably any spiral floors that I ran into as well. But anyways, we're making the last push at Skull Cavern and I always find that last hour, since it is the hour that we are the deepest in the mines, we do get the most iridium. So you did see uh, that last floor had tons of iridium. This floor right here has tons of iridium, so we're just gonna blow it all up, get as much iridium, keep trying to go down, and we do pass out at floor 117, and we got just 200 iridium ore, which isn't too bad for just a good luck day and not going super crazy with staircases and bombs. After that dive, we're gonna have another dive today on day 20 of fall, and today is a super luck day. So we are going to warp straight to Skull Cavern after organizing our stuff. It's only 6 a.m. Today would have been pretty valid for a magic rock candy, but I did choose to not use any magic rock candies today. And I am starting off with that same strategy as yesterday's dive, where I just keep leaving and re-entering until I get a floor I like. And this floor is fine. There's a bunch of rocks right there, which is why I choose to blow it up. There's an emerald, so I guess I go for it. I definitely think I could have kept leaving and re-entering and gotten a better floor, especially because leaving and re-entering virtually takes zero in-game time. We do have a decent amount of staircases with us, so any floors that looked unappealing like that last one, I will skip. And then any floors where there's plenty of rocks to blow up, We'll go ahead and blow up and look at that three holes unfortunately we can only utilize one of them of course and it leads us to a floor with a nice gold cluster right there which is always nice and we're just gonna go ahead and keep heading down getting more gold and of course eventually we'll get way down but first we're met with a treasure floor i do get four energy tonics which are actually pretty useful they're basically a full heal if we need and after that, we've made it all the way down to floor 75. It's only 2.20 p.m., so we're making pretty good time here. And we do uncover a hole that leads us to another treasure floor, and we get a rain totem. Of course, we can craft rain totems manually with some pine tar and truffle oil and hardwood, but they still are nice to get as they are useful. Using one will guarantee rain the next day, unless it is a festival or a day it cannot rain on of course and we did end up using it right now just because my inventory was full i probably should have saved it and the best time to save it for is to use it on a day that it is thunderstorming because if it's thunderstorming on a day and you use it it'll guarantee the day after that is a thunderstorm so probably would have been nice to save it for that situation since using it right now it's probably just going to be a regular rainy day tomorrow not a thunderstorm and now as you can see here we've made it down to floor 115 and it is my favorite type of floor they always have so many iridium nodes on these floors and then moving on we make it to a treasure floor at floor 127 and get 15 cactus seeds which aren't going to be too useful since we can just forage cactus fruit from the desert but who knows, maybe we'll use some garden pots and plant some cactus to grow inside. We're gonna keep continuing downward at this point. We're just basically blowing up tons of iridium ore and we're just gonna keep doing that and then that'll put us at the end of this day and the end of this video. We were able to have some pretty lucrative dives over these days and next time, we'll reach one of the biggest milestones in any Stardew Valley game, whether it be a min-max run, perfection run, or just a casual run, and that is finishing the community center. We'll finally be able to obtain a Nautilus shell from buying it from the traveling cart, 
which we will use to complete the field research bundle. We also now have a crocus and snow yam from our winter seeds, and we'll use these to finish the winter foraging bundle. And we'll also have a wine now to finish the enchanters bundle. And then that'll be every bundle finished completing the community center. So if you are looking forward to all of that next time, please consider subscribing so you'll be sure not to miss it. Until then, feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or questions or with whatever you enjoyed or just anything you'd like to share. I always appreciate the comments. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye.